A common misconception about chaos and chaos theory is that it revolves around disorder. People take the everyday domestic definition of chaos and automatically assume that's what chaos theory is all about. They couldn't be more wrong. Chaos theory is one of the newest and most interesting fields of abstract science and complex mathematics. It is the very essence of order, as you will come to understand. Until the 1960s, the world of science was relatively simple. Everything could be explained with the simple formulas, and everything behaved in a predictable way. It was not until 1961 that an American meteorologist by the name of Edward Lorenz pioneered chaos theory. As the story goes, one day when Lorenz was working on his weather forecasting machine, he decided he wanted to examine a previous day's sequence in more detail. He typed the numbers from the previous day's printout into the computers and went to get a coffee. When he returned, he couldn't believe his eyes. The new weather was nothing like the original. It was completely different. Then he realized what happened. On the printout, the number was .506 because the computer rounds the numbers off if told to print. Yet the number stored in the computer's memory was .506127. The difference, one part in a thousand, would usually have been dismissed as insignificant. But when he typed in .506 instead of the full number, it produced a completely different result. That's when Lorenz realized that the weather was a chaotic system. This phenomenon became known as extreme sensitivity dependent upon initial conditions. What this simply means is that even the most minute, almost imperceptible change in starting conditions, like a butterfly flapping its wings, could very well generate catastrophic and unpredictable results in the final outcome. It will never be possible to predict the behavior of systems that display extreme sensitivity. That's why we cannot predict weather for more than a week in advance. When Lorenz was asked for evidence supporting his proposal, he graphed three differential equations that described convection, which is how heat moves through air. What he found was that it produced a butterfly-like strange attractor. An attractor is a point or a state to which any dynamic system eventually settles at, depending on its properties. For example, imagine a marble swirling around a bowl. It will eventually settle at the bottom, and the point at where it stops attracts the marble. Although Lorenz's butterfly clearly displayed extreme sensitivity dependent upon initial conditions, the path of the line was strangely predictable, thus establishing an underlying order within the chaos. This type of chaos is known as deterministic chaos. <laughs> It's impossible to talk about chaos without mentioning fractals. Professor Benoit Mandelbrot, a French-born mathematician, discovered fractals one day while studying nature. He noted that nature had a peculiar tendency to repeat itself, often in strange and unpredictable patterns. Fractals, yeah, are any geometrical structures that have intricate detail on all levels of magnification so that no matter how big you make it, you still see new patterns and new designs that you didn't see before. It's never ending, yeah? Fractals are very popular, yeah? Because they describe nature. I mean, if you look at a tree, what shape do you see? It's not a triangle, is it? And a cloud's not a circle, and a river's not a rectangle. They are, in fact, all fractals. Have you noticed, yeah, that when you look at a tree, you've got the trunk, You've got the branches coming out of the trunk, and then you've got twigs coming out of the branches, and then you've got even smaller twiglets coming out of those twigs. And they all uncannily resemble each other, yeah? There's a process called self-similarity. To show you just how much fractals are intertwined with nature, we'll use a simple fractal generating software, yeah? I'm going to start with two lines of different lengths, and I'm going to tell the computer to extend these lines and make them change direction at different times. Look what happens, it's very interesting. It looks very much like a tree, yeah?
Indeed, no one can dispute the intimate bond between fractals and nature, but perhaps the most famous fractal today is the Mandelbrot set. It has been cited as being the greatest discovery of mathematics of the 20th century. Dubbed the thumbprint of God and Father Fractal, the Mandelbrot set contains every fractal imaginable. It was discovered by Benoit Mandelbrot in 1980 whilst working at the IBM Research Center. He had been studying the work of another mathematician in the way of complex numbers, and when he devised his own very simple formula, he first glimpsed the Mandelbrot set. In theory, it could have been discovered any time in human history due to its simplicity. But even though it is only based on addition, subtraction and multiplication, you have to carry out these operations thousands of times to create the complete set. This is why it was not discovered until the age of modern technology. The Mandelbrot set is a collection of points plotted on the complex plane. The complex plane, imagine your ordinary Cartesian plane with its x and y axis, but instead of an x and y axis you have the real axis and the imaginary axis. Now a complex plane only applies to complex numbers, and complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part. The real part is any number, such as 2, and the imaginary part is any number times by a special number called i. I, the number I was invented to give negative numbers square roots because as we all know you cannot square a negative number and get and get a positive answer. I is defined to be the square root of negative one, so I squared equals negative one. Now to plot the Mandelbrot set, what you first need to understand is the iterating function z goes to z squared plus c. The goes to symbol in the middle simply means that whatever value we get, we feed right back into the equation. And this is a process called iteration. There are two possible directions that your iteration will take. The value will either continue growing, eventually shooting off to infinity, or it will get smaller and smaller, eventually reaching zero. What Mandelbrot did was he told the computer to color all the points that eventually reach zero black and the ones that shoot it off to infinity rainbow. The points that equal zero make the boundary of the Mandelbrot. Even though the colors are mainly used because they are aesthetically pleasing, they do actually have a purpose. They represent different areas of calculations, the rate at which the points shoot off to infinity. In this image, it may look like the Mandelbrot set is moving, but in fact, all we are doing is cycling through the colors. Because the Mandelbrot set is a fractal, it displays all fractal characteristics. If we look in the right places, we are able to see baby Mandelbrots and other unique patterns and designs. Even when the Mandelbrot set is larger than the universe, new patterns continue to emerge. It has infinite detail, yet we can't touch it. Scientists hope that one day the Mandelbrot set will give us a better understanding of our universe and the world around us.